Local stories, local voices. We're localwebradio.fm. Welcome to Sound Investing with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Woodgundy and recognized by Vancouver Magazine in its selection of top wealth makers in Vancouver for 2013. And now, here's your host. Well, yes, this is your host, Eric Reynolds, and I'm here with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Woodgundy. And today we're talking with Byron about how to use dividends for planning tax-efficient income and we will be discussing how using dividend income helps with the tax bill, some examples of the smart use of dividends, and how U.S. dividends differ from receiving Canadian dividends. Now, before Byron joins us, just as a reminder that if you have questions or require assistance, you can reach Byron at 604-535-3700. Again, that's 604-535-3700. Well, Byron, it's great to be talking with you again today. Uh, glad to be here today, Eric. Well, so Byron, this week, we're going to continue to talk about improving the tax efficiency of our investment income. So how does using dividend income help with the tax bill? Well, it, it helps quite a bit, uh, actually. Um, eligible, eligible Canadian dividends are a source of investment income with tax benefits. Um, they have a, t a preferential tax treatment that helps individuals plan a more tax-efficient income solution for their investment income. Um, dividends are actually paid to shareholders from a corporation's after-tax profits, um, which are also known as retained earnings. This uh, income is included on a shareholder's personal tax return, like the rest of his uh, income, to calculate the income tax payable. Now, however, the good news is that investors also receive a tax credit, which reduces the income tax payable. And the reason that uh, shareholders receive a tax credit is because tax has actually already been paid paid by the corporation, the business that's, that's earning this income. So this tax treatment is called a dividend tax credit, and it, it really just eliminates double taxation of the income that has already been paid by the corporation. So Byron, is the dividend tax credit a deduction or refund, and, and how do you determine how much tax you save? Well, this particular tax reduction it's a fixed amount in the hands of the investor regardless of what their personal tax bracket is. The, the, the income tax payable, however, increases as the investor's individual tax bracket uh, increases. So, so in higher brackets, the dividend tax credit offsets some, but not all of the taxes payable on the dividend income. But in lower tax brackets, the dividend tax credit can offset all of the taxes on the uh, dividend income and still have excess tax credits left over to, to offset income taxes on other types of income. So that makes dividend income very effective in low income situations like, um, like perhaps a stay at home mom in a high uh, income family or a high income couple or perhaps for children where um, income sharing within the family is, is a priority or a strategy. Um, uh, another great example uh, is using dividends to pay for school tuition. Now, this income can easily be structured so that parents are paying for private or public school expenses with before-tax money. Um, and I, I'm actually thinking, as I say that, that I, I will do a show on that topic because that is very interesting. Well, now, Byron, that's a great idea, and especially with the high cost of private school or university. Now, if a lower-income individual can eliminate income tax or dividend income, how much income can he receive before it's taxable? Well, um, to, get the, to get the highest amount of, of tax-free dividend income, uh, it, it would work out best if you only take dividend income. So if we look at an individual who receives um, uh, only eligible Canadian dividends, as their income, there's, there's an actual annual amount that you can receive where the dividend tax credit offsets all of the income taxes 
that would otherwise be payable. This is uh, actually called the, the tax-free dividend amount by accountants and such. And and for 2013, um, the tax-free dividend amount is actually $48,850. So it's <laughs> it's wow. it's quite a generous you know amount if you yeah. can structure it that way. Um, and and this is an extremely effective way for individuals with businesses um, to share income amongst families family members, uh, certainly in a very tax-efficient manner. Uh, in fact, eligible dividends are the lowest taxed form of income up to a taxable income of just a touch under $105,000. So after, uh, after that, after about $105,000, capital gains actually start edging dividends out a bit. Well, now, Byron, we're up against a break, so let's go ahead and take that break now. But we will be right back with Byron Stryloff. Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy. And when we return, we'll be discussing dividends for planning tax-efficient income. We'll be right back. More Sound Investing with Byron Stryloff after this. Buying or selling a home on the Semiamu Peninsula? Catch up on local market conditions on This Week in Real Estate with Lance and Connie Marples from Sutton West Coast Realty on localwebradio.fm. If you're struggling with a dental or oral health issue, be sure to catch the Healthy Smiles Oral Health Show with Dr. Norm Eckert on the Health Channel on localwebradio.fm. Shopping for the lowest mortgage rate? Looking to refinance? Catch the Mortgage Newscast with Jared Dreyer on the Business Channel on localwebradio.fm. It's now time for more sound investing with Byron Stryloff, Senior Investment Advisor at CIBC Wood Gundy. Well, all right, we're back with Byron Stryloff, and we're discussing dividends and the effect on after-tax income. So, Byron, I understand that the dividends are one of the best choices for maximum after-tax income. Now, does this apply to all dividends? And by this, I mean regardless of which company we invest in, uh, whether they are paid by Bell Canada or IBM. Um. Yeah, that's that's actually interesting. Not quite, because investors in Canadian public companies will all receive the same type of dividends, but Canadian investors buying U.S. stocks will be taxed at a much higher rate. Um, and, and this is important to understand. Um, you know, dividends are popular right now because of the rate of return uh, or their rate of return, which is usually higher than interest uh, right now. Um, and of course, their preferential tax treatment. Now that we have a strong U.S. market, uh, we have a lot of Canadians that are being attracted to U.S. dividend stocks for their income potential. Now, the problem is much more of those dividends will be taxed away, and Canadian investors need to understand this, as uh, I find that many do not realize the ta tax implications. They're, they're not the same. Now, Byron, so how exactly does the taxation of U.S. dividends differ from receiving Canadian dividends? Well, it, it is. It, there is quite a difference. Um, first of all, Canadian residents earning investment income from foreign sources, uh, they're subject to withholding taxes. Um, in the case of earning dividends on, on U.S. securities, the withholding tax, it's a flat tax of 15%, and that's established by some <laughs> U.S.-Canadian tax treaty. Um, so right off the bat, our investor is only receiving 85% of the gross dividend that he earned and and now it gets taxed in Canada so so the gross dividend is reported on your tax return but it's not eligible for a dividend tax credit that's that's only for Canadian companies the the 15 percent tax withheld by the IRS on the, on the, on the dividends is that's used to calculate a foreign tax credit which theoretically eliminates any double taxation on the dividends. I say the theoretically because, you know, seldom does the amount of tax and the credit match up and, and usually not in favor of the investor. But, but in any event, in the end, 
the the results are the same to the investor as paying tax on interest income. So in other words, it, it, it becomes a high tax rate. Well, okay, so that doesn't work out well for uh, people who want tax-efficient income. Now, is there any tax planning that can improve the tax efficiency on U.S. or any foreign dividends? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because there is a way to reduce that particular tax bill. Um, some mutual funds have special tax treatment to solve this problem. Uh, Canadian investors buying U.S. dividend-paying stocks uh, through a regular mutual fund, they will receive almost identical taxation to the to the individual stock. Um, again, these dividends are taxed at the same rate as interest, basically. However, for a Canadian investor buying U.S. dividend-paying stocks through a, a special corporate class mutual fund, they'll receive a much better tax treatment. Um, first of all, only the net amount, the 85%, is used to increase the net asset value of the fund. Um, second, they do not receive a tax slip reporting this income and or the withholding tax. So as a result, when they sell the fund, there's, there's no foreign tax credit, but rather the increase in value is reported as a capital gain under income tax. So in this case, if you, and, and I think most of us do, if you have some capital losses hanging around, you can offset the capital gain dollar for dollar. Hmm. So, so obviously, using this strategy, you can you can uh, you can either create a very tax efficient income, or tax efficient compounding growth. Either way, you will have more money to create future growth or more income to spend if you share less of it with the government. And and this is one of those few areas where it's actually your choice. Well, Byron, thanks so much for the conversation. But you know, as always. We've come to the end of the episode, and we're out of time. Now, if for the listener, you know someone who would benefit from what we've talked about today, go ahead and share this podcast with them. I'm sure they'll thank you for it. Now, you can always visit Byron on his website at www.byronstryloff.com. Again, that's www.byronstryloff.com. And you can always reach Byron by telephone at 604-535-3700. Again, that's 604-535-3700. Well, Byron, as always, for myself, for the listeners, thanks again for the conversation today. Thank you very much, Eric. Thanks for listening to Sound Investing with Byron Stryloff. To schedule a face-to-face -face conversation, you can reach Byron at 604-535-3700. That's 604-535-3700. And online at www.byronstryloff.com. You're opted in to localwebradio.fm. Community-minded, locally focused. This episode is a production of Jam Media. For information on hosting your own web radio show, visit jammedia.com. That's www.jambmedia.com. The opinions expressed by our guest and host on localwebradio.fm do not necessarily reflect the views of Jam Media or its owners. No expressed or implied opinions of any product or service should be considered an endorsement or recommendation of any kind by Jam Media or its owners.